Hi, and welcome to the Indiana Wild Animal Update, where we celebrate human-animal cultural connections. I'm Alligator Aaron. The Indiana Wild Animal Update is presented by Holistic Select Dog and Cat Food. Guinness obviously loves it. And with support from Pet Supplies Plus. With the support from people like you and our sponsors, Holistic Select and Pet Supplies Plus, Indiana Wild was able to bring live animals and celebrate human-animal cultural connections with people across Indiana. Remember, the Indiana Wild Facebook page lists all of our public animal shows and appearances. Make sure you friend us today. We're going to look at a new strange animal that Indiana Wild just adopted from the Bucks County Zoo. We'll discuss a new study regarding intelligence and our best friend, the dog, and we'll talk about taking animals out of the wild for pets. The animals from Indiana Wild come from rescue organizations, unwanted pets, or other zoological institutions. We love adopting animals from other zoological groups, especially animals that they have used in their educational outreach programs. We lucked into a great opportunity when the Bucks County Zoo was retiring some of their program animals. Indiana Wild took in an armadillo, a prehensile tailed porcupine, and a very unique pro cyanid. Check him out. This is Ringo. He is an animal called a ringtail. Not to be confused with that crazy pro simian, the ringtail lemur. That's a monkey type of critter. A ringtail is a raccoon sort of critter. They're from the same family, the procyanids. Okay, kiddos, learn your Latin. These are the raccoons, kinkachus, olingos, codamundis, and ringtails. All members walk plantigrade, which means the entire sole of their foot touches the ground when they walk. They can swivel their heels almost all the way around. All but one of them are nocturnal, and all but one has a tail with rings. Ringtails are the state animal of Arizona. They love ringtails there. They are also called ringtail cats, or miners cats. Remember though, Ringo is not a cat, but some people think they look like cats. And silver miners used to keep them in their cabins to catch rats and mice in the 17 and 1800s in Arizona. Oh, and if you're wondering what the state animal of Indiana is, there isn't one. We only have a state bird, the cardinal. And if you're wondering where you can see a ringtail, I only know of one place, Indiana Wild. All right, well let's talk about our best friend, the dog. A study from the University of Vienna just determined that female dogs may be smarter than male dogs. I don't know about all that, but the study in biology letters found that just like in humans, there are general gender differences between how the brain works. Basically, researchers rolled a tennis ball sized ball behind a screen. They either had the same size ball roll out the other side or a larger ball roll out the other side. Researchers then observed the dog's recognition of the size difference. Well, the male dogs did not react any differently to a different sized ball. The female dogs, however, had visibly different reactions from head tilts to increased excitement, even investigating behind the screen. Spaying and neutering didn't have any effect on the outcome. Have you noticed any differences like this in your own pets? Why do you think females would notice a size difference, but the males don't? Remember when you were a kid? Do you remember exploring the woods, the beach, and the park? Think back to the excitement of coming across a snake, catching a fish, or finding a baby bunny in the, in the wild. I know that these experiences helped me learn about animals. Having permissive parents that allowed me to bring some of these creatures home taught me how to care for animals and to respect nature. If you and your kids find a wild animal in the woods or at the lake, keep in mind that the animal belongs in the wild. I believe that kids can learn huge amounts of ecology, habitat information, natural history, biology, and science by properly caring for animals. And I believe there are right and wrong ways and the right situations to take animals from the wild. But as a responsible adult, you have to weigh those lessons with the morality of removing an animal from its natural habitat. Also, it may be against the law to take an animal from the wild in your state or county, so be responsible out there. 
Let's talk about one common wild animal that seems to wind up in classrooms and homes all over Indiana, the box turtle. This is not a box turtle. I don't have a box turtle. Box turtles are classified as state-listed endangered species in Indiana, meaning that they are protected in the state of Indiana and, she, and you should not have one in your possession without the proper permits. If you want a pet turtle, there are plenty of affordable captive bred turtles out there. So this summer, leave the box turtles in the woods. That about does it for our human animal cultural connections today. If you want more human animal cultural connections or a fantastic live animal program for your daycare, school, scouts, or church group, email Indiana Wild, Aaron at indianawild.org, or visit the website, indianawild.org. And for all of your pet needs, remember to shop at a Pet Supplies Plus. There are four Indianapolis locations, Avon, Broad Ripple, Greenwood, and Noblesville. Indiana Wild and I have some pet seminars coming up at each of the Pet Supplies Plus locations. Be sure to join us. This has been the Indiana Wild Animal Update, presented by Holistic Select Dog and Cat Foods, made right here in Mishawaka, Indiana. We'll see you at Pet Supplies Plus. Be wild.